In this video, we're going to look at examples of lots of molecules and what point groups they belong to. So we're going to look at these in kind of a reverse order of what we did in the previous video. Uh, so I described in detail what all these uh, symbols for the point groups are, what symmetry elements they have, and what and where their names for their labels come from. So this this video is much more focused on. Uh, combining with that video, what are some examples of molecules that have those point groups and why? Okay, so D infinity H, as I said, is a linear group. They're symmetric with respect to uh, the middle of that line as well. So things like CO2, C2H2, and homonuclear diatomics H2O2. That's really the most symmetric group uh, that we encounter typically in chemistry for molecules. Uh, then if I break that symmetry about the middle of that axis, so things like heteronuclear diatomics or uh, linear uh, polyatomics. Then I have things like C infinity V for HCN, CO, HF, hydroxide ion, etc. Uh, the three cubic groups, which are very, very symmetric but nonlinear, things like Buckminster fullerene C60 is an icosahedron. We have octahedra the octahedral group, things that look like cubes have the same symmetry as a cube. SF6, um, molybdenum uh, hexa CO, uh, iron, uh, iron uh, hexacyanide. I need a six there, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, tetrahedral TD, uh, perfect tetrahedron is a TD group. Uh, methane, ammonium, uh, CF4, and the like. Then starting at uh, the very simple cyclic groups, CS, CI, C1. Uh, we have <clears throat> HOF, uh, fluorochlorobenzene, one, two substituted, uh, HFCO, or uh, one fluoronaphthalene. These things only have a mirror plane. CI, things that only have an inversion center. You have to kind of struggle to come up with examples of chemical uh, cases for this. The one I have is this staggered molecule where I have uh, CF and H on each side. But if you invert through this inversion center here, you'll notice that each atom goes to a matching pair on the opposite side of the inversion center. But it's very important that you're talking about the staggered configuration there. So at room temperature where these things are free to rotate, they don't have that symmetry because everything can just average out. You have to be frozen in that configuration to have that symmetry. Okay, C1 is basically no symmetry. Things like uh, CHF, CL, BR, there's kind of no symmetry elements there besides just the identity. Same thing here, these are, uh, you notice there's no matching groups there. Okay, D2H is a highly symmetric group, things like acetylene, or sorry, things like ethylene, ethene, as you might say, uh, one three of this uh, uh, cyclobut cyclobutene, or, okay, blanking on the name of this at the moment, but four-membered, four-membered anti-aromatic ring with two Fs there if it stayed completely in plane. Uh, D3H, things like BH3, things like uh, uh, cyclopropyl, cyclopropylene uh, uh, cation there, or the eclipsed configuration of, ethy, of uh, ethane in the eclipsed configuration only. Okay, D6H, things like benzene, hexafluorobenzene, or coronene. There's that six-fold axis in a plane, uh, lots of symmetry there. D2D, these are things where if you look at them side on, there's kind of a, a side side rotation there. Allene, which is C, double bond C, double bond C, eight, two H's on each end. These two H's are in the plane of the board. These two H's come in and come out of the board. So that's kind of funky. You have to visualize that. I'd recommend practicing uh, at the symmetry at Otterbein website or elsewhere. Uh, just practicing what these D two, what these D N D groups look like, because it's kind of a hard thing to realize until you actually see what it is. It takes some practice to see it. Um, similarly, the staggered configuration of ethane is D three D. It's kind of like two triangles that you look at from the side, but they're uh, they're staggered relative to one another. If you had two uh, squares that were staggered relative to one another from the side, that would be D4D, pentagons for D5D, etc. You just kind of need to see that in 3D. I can't do a good job of describing that on two-dimensional paper. D2 gets even more confusing to see. 
Um, this molecule twistane they have at Otterbein as well. I'd recommend just looking at the twistane molecule and seeing what I'm talking about. You can see the, the C2 principal axis and the two C2s, which are perpendicular to that. D3 is neither staggered nor eclipsed a non-aligned ethane. Uh, that's Again, these, those are like uh, two triangles that are slightly displaced relative to one another, but not perfectly juxtaposed. Uh, C2V, one of everybody's favorite point groups, water, F2O, uh, formaldehyde, 1,4-difluorobenzene, uh, lots of great molecules in that point group. Similarly, C3V, you have ammonia, 1,3,5-trinitrobenzene. Uh, uh, tri tricyanobenzene. I was trying to say nitrile, but I don't know how to say that when there's three of them. Uh, also, the nitrate ion uh, is a has the same type of uh, geometry as NH3. It's a, a trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal molecules are C3V. C3H, something like boric acid. These are all in a plane, but notice how they have a curvature to them in the plane, so they don't have those mirror planes. The only plane they have is the plane that they all lie in. Uh, S4, just like the DND groups, the DN groups, uh, is even funkier to try to to try to realize. Uh, 12 crown 4, the uh, crown ether is an example. Uh, then S6, there's uh, 18 crown 6. A lot of these crown ethers have these SN types of symmetries. They're very weird. You just have to look at them to see it. I can't describe it on paper, and I can't draw it with any kind of justice. And finally, C2, something like hydrogen, hydrazine, N2H4, how they're in this kind of offset configuration. Notice that it's not aligned in this configuration. Um, or H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, again, if it's not aligned, if they're not perfectly aligned in the plane or, or anti to the plane, uh, it'll have this type of C2 symmetry. Okay, so that's a lot of examples of these point groups and what kind of molecules are in them. Otterbein has a ton of these for you to practice on and get used to seeing because the whole key here is practice, practice, practice to be able to see all the kinds of examples and get kind of some intuition and feel for how to work with these.